So when I bicycled to North Dakota, I wanted to take the opportunity to go visit the NDSU Research and Technology Park. It's a kind of a hub for young entrepreneurs and student innovators. We met with Brian Kalk, the director of the park, and he introduced us to the services and to the different things that they do to have companies and young people and young entrepreneurs work together. And so you get a one person comes in, they've been in their garage or in their basement, they come in, they rent an office, and then we start getting them immersed in the financial training and the human resources training, linking them with companies, linking them with experts. And as their company grows, they can move into a larger space inside the building, or they can leave the building and go somewhere else out in the community as they grow. Mm -hmm. And so that... It reminds me a little bit about what we're trying to do with this fellowship, where we give people, students, young people, a real world opportunity to work with investors and entrepreneurs. The Research and Technology Park is really all about bridging the gap between the student innovators at the university and different innovative companies from the community to help create jobs for students and experience for students. The company starts here. 100% of the intellectual capital, that they, intellectual property that they have here is theirs. So that's one of the big nuances. Ah, yeah, that's important because I think a lot of universities that struggled with how do, you, how do the companies protect their IP yep. while they're working with the university that may be, that, that may be involved and may be researching some of that Well, and IP. it's fair because yeah, I was a university faculty a few years ago as well, and the university, if they're using the university's labs, university space, the university should get something out of it. So we do have some companies that have started on campus and they came over here so that whatever they started on campus, there's a sharing agreement. Whatever new stuff they develop here is all theirs. He also shared with me the most recent project of the park a makerspace, which provides a huge opportunity for the young entrepreneurs. Not just people associated with the school, but people in the community will be able to go to this makerspace and work together on projects. Basically, it's a collaboration area of different disciplines. So uh, the students come up with the idea of having a metal shop, a wood shop, a digital lab, a textiles lab. And the idea everybody kind of liked, but there was no space on it. Well, a few years ago, we had one of our major tenants, the, it was Bobcat, it was the initial tenant. They decided they wanted to consolidate some of their assets, which is good for them, but it freed up some shop space for us. So then what we did is we converted that shop space into this maker space, and we're in the process now of acquiring equipment. And we look at it, this is really going to help the collaboration of students and entrepreneurs, because we'll get electrical engineers talking to folks in the wood shop, we'll talk how to get folks that are working in architecture, might be collaborating in other areas where normally they stay in their stove pipes. But the goal here is to create a, an area where someone could do rapid prototyping uh, with small things, and if it works well in that area, then they can get a you know, large production. One of the entrepreneurs has developed a fishing lure that blinks, okay? It doesn't sound like much, but it's hard to figure out how to turn it off and on and keep it so it works well. He's been doing different iterations of printing what it looks like for the fish to bite it better, and he's producing them for a few bucks and selling them for a lot. <laughs> and so, uh, we're helping him, and sooner or later he'll get that design that's just right. But yeah. he came up with this idea, he's a fisherman, and he's like, I wonder how I could make that lure better. Yeah. Well, he figured out a way to make it better, and he did produce one or two himself in his garage again. And now he's producing 50 or 100, selling them for quite a bit. And before long, he'll be producing, you know, 1,000 or 2,000, and maybe yeah. he sells them to a larger sporting goods company. Maybe he sells them online. Yeah. I mean, the world is your oyster when it comes to selling stuff now. Yeah. If you visualize something, okay, then you can quickly design it and 3D print it to see what it looks like, and then you can quickly make it better, look at different products right. on it, and so that's the, the real value of it. And we're actually gonna be having some 3D scanning capability where you could scan in an arm and look at prosthetic arms or legs. Well, that's great, so here we are again at the uh, research park at Fargo, the NDSU Technology and Research Park, uh, actually bringing us the future. We hope so. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming so, by. Thank you very much. Yeah.